This is natural emerald from Colombia. It is included as most natural emerald is, and it's a little more included than a lot of natural emerald. But I won this emerald as a door prize up at the uh, United States Fasteners Guild's Franklin Frolic up in the Great Smoky Mountains of North Carolina a few weeks ago. Door prizes. Just one more reason why it's, a, it's good to participate in events with your local fasting groups. I enjoyed the frolic this year. This emerald rough weighs in at 4.5 carats. So normally I would expect a yield of just under one carat and I'd hope to hit that magical one carat mark. But this emerald, like most emeralds, grows in a kind of a crystal shape that lends itself to a natural emerald or, or rectangular design. And if I use an emerald or rectangular design, I bet I can get a gemstone of, oh, 1.5 carats, a lot more than just under the one carat with a different design. So let's see if I can hit the 1.5 carat mark. Now for a design. I'll just use a traditional emerald design with step cuts. A design suitable for, for pretty much any level of a gem cutter. My friend Mika, aka the German gem cutter on YouTube, recently told me that he likes a design called the Ideal Emerald 133 design. So I think I'll give this design a try. I went to facetdiagrams.org and downloaded the Ideal Emerald 133 for barrel. I, I downloaded it into my Gem Cut Studio file and then I opened it with GCS and saved it which converted the file to a .gcs extended file. I prepared a video on how to load gem cutting designs into GCS and how to convert a file from the uh, faceting diagrams website into a .gcs format. And here's a link to that video if you want to see the process. So here are the cutting instructions for the Ideal Emerald 133 which was created by Steven Weintraub Jr. And if I cut this design correctly with my emerald, it should look like this when I'm done. Man, just so you don't have to go look all over the place in the internet for the cutting instructions if you want to cut this design, here they are. So this is natural emerald, it is included has inclusions, some issues inside, as most natural emerald does. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it, see what I can do with it. There's one part of it uh, over on this side that's kind of very included. So I'll probably, I'm not sure if I'm going to end up with an emerald shape or a square shape. But it's a nice big piece of emerald. It's uh, 4.5 carats, so. Yeah, that, that end piece there probably cut off. For our emerald crystal, what we do is we want to set it in our uh, spindle of our Ultratech machine. So we put the index tooth at 96, and then we want the horizontal, kind of the crystal, to be at that 96 index. So we set it in our uh, spindle that way and lock the set screw and lock it in place, and we're ready to start uh, preforming our emerald. Okay, I've gone over our emerald with a 3000 grit lap. Now, uh, I switched and I'm not using my bat laps with 3000 grit diamond on this stone. And the reason is because this emerald, most emerald has inclusions and this emerald uh, is no exception, has a lot of inclusions. And so if you use the bat lap with 3000 grit diamonds or the bat lap with any grit diamond slurry, you're gonna end up with right here. You see that? That's, 
that was uh, with 3000 grit diamond on that lap. But that's all going to get cut off because that's uh, when I cut the upper half, that black line there. That's the slurry from the uh, lap getting sucked into a crack. <coughs> so whenever you're working with a stone with fractures, uh, be cautious of, of the bat laps. But for other things, bat laps is awesome. So what did I use? I used the uh, lightning laps and uh, I'll, I'll use lightning laps on the stone all the way through the different grits. I used a 3000 grit and then I'll use the, uh, uh, probably the 8,000, 14,000, 50,000 and uh, uh, to polish it. Or, or I may at the 50, instead of the 50,000 grit diamond uh, lightning laps, I may use the uh, Spectrum Ultra laps because they seem to work better for me when there's a lot of fractures, maybe some cracks. They do, to me, a better job of kind of reaching into uh, cracked areas and polishing up probably because it's a mylar. So I saw Marsh at, uh, of Lightning Laps up at the uh, Franklin Frolic recently, and I did, being a lapaholic, I did purchase another lap from him, which I did, hadn't seen before, and that's this uh, 100K uh, Lightning Lap. So I have that now, uh, and actually he had also a, a Nano uh, N8, which is kind of like a 400 grit lap. Uh, that I also purchased. That's kind of like a, an, uh, an ultra lap. It's, it's mylar, but you don't certainly don't need to purchase every lap out there, but there are other laps. Okay, I finished polishing the three tiers with the, or three rows with the Spectra ultra lap. And the reason is, is because that uh, won't, doesn't make any slurry, which get, would get sucked into the uh, cracks in this natural emerald. So now I'll go back and cut the corners and there's uh, three, three rows or three tiers to cut in the corner. And what I want to do with the first one is make a point right there um, that just touches that top tier. Make, it'll make kind of a, a triangle shape. And then the second uh, cut will go between the first and second row and even line up those uh, lines with the first uh, triangle. And then the third cut will be on the girdle and line up the lines to make it wide enough so that it just makes the, uh, that, uh, the side cuts all lined up. Okay, I finished polishing the pavilion, the bottom half of our emerald, and now I'll transfer the stone in my transfer jig and prepare to cut the upper half or the crown of the stone. And I've already uh, made a video on how to use how to transfer a stone. If you want to go see how to do it to transfer, go ahead and uh, just click that link and you can take a look at it. Okay, I finished polishing the upper half, the crown of our emerald, and now I have the table to cut and polish, so I will uh, do that next and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, I finished polishing the table of our emerald, so now I'll soak it in the acetone to remove the uh, the adhesive from the top, and then we'll weigh it, measure it, and uh, send it off to Bulpy. I cut this emerald with a very traditional design, suitable for even a beginning faceter. The shape that emeralds normally form in, in nature lend themselves to a rectangular shaped design. That's why the rectangular designs are often also called emerald designs, emerald shaped designs. So using a rectangular design did allow me to get some extra yield on this stone. Also, I did switch out laps and I didn't use my normal go-to bat laps with diamond grit. Instead, I used my lightning laps. The reason is that lightning laps uh, don't create a, a slurry uh, while the bat laps do. And emeralds, uh, natural emeralds, often have internal issues like inclusions and fractures. And if I'd used my bat laps with diamond, the slurry that is created would have been sucked into the fracture and it would have been very difficult to remove. Now I know there are some fasteners who have told me that they put wax on the stone or where there's inclusions and the wax goes into the inclusion and that prevents the slurry from being sucked in. I didn't try that. Uh, it sounds like it'll work fine uh, as long as you don't open up a new fracture as you're, as you're working with the bat laps because if you do then the slurry is going to get sucked into that new crack once that crack breaks the surface. But that's a, a way to get around it and use the 
bat laps, I understand. I know there are some cutters out there who, who advocate for only using a very small handful of laps and they use those laps for everything they cut. I can't remember the number. It seems like they said four, I don't know, maybe five laps. Well, every cutter has their own preferences, their own likes and dislikes about laps and their own uh, laps that they like to use. Uh, if you want to work with a smaller number of laps, more power to you. Super. But for me, I like having different laps available, even if I don't use them every day. It's kind of like having the right tool in the toolbox that you can pull out when you run into issues or a problem facet or an included emerald. This stone is just the perfect example. Bat laps with diamond slurry would have been a problem. So I was very happy to have lightning laps in my tool back box. They did the trick for me. I guess my analogy is that I've heard golf pros uh, state that you can get by in golf with three or four golf clubs. Well, maybe you can get by, but most golfers end up putting 14 clubs in their golf bag when they go out and play a round or two. To me, it's the same with laps in gem cutting as it is with golf clubs and golf. Maybe there is some minimum number that you could get by with, but it sure is nice to have that special tool in the toolbox when you run into a problem. So that Special golf club or special lap that really works well, just the right situation makes me happy. But it's up to you. Each cutter decides what preferences uh, they want, what they what they are want to cut with, and what laps they like. And if you're just starting out, or if you're on a tight budget, then definitely minimize the number of laps you have. The main thing is to enjoy your cutting. So as always, happy fasting, everyone.